Welcome to Venture, the world of small business and big ideas. We welcome Hannah Zalzal, founder and CEO of Cargo Cosmetics, to the program. She's a civil engineer, believe it or not, turned beauty aid expert. You pay attention to all kinds of economic indicators to predict the markets. The S&P 500, the ISM, the VIX. But what about the lipstick index? The term lipstick index was coined by the chairman of Estee Lauder, Leonard Lauder. He noticed that during tough economic times, his lipstick sales increased. In fact, he was on to something. In the fall of 2001, at the height of the recession, sales of lipstick in America increased by 11%. That's according to The Economist. The theory goes like this. Consumers turn to less expensive indulgences, such as lipstick, when she or he feels less confident about the future. Therefore, lipstick sales tend to increase as consumers attempt to kiss off, shall we call it, the recession blues. So maybe it's not a surprise then that Hannah Zalzal's company is doing so well. In 1996, playing the roles of both mother and engineer, she founded Cargo Cosmetics. The focus was on creating innovative packaging and formulation. The new project getting all the buzz is Plant Love. This product rethinks the classic lipstick tube for a green world. It's made of corn and is completely biodegradable. The product has shown a 30% growth march over February. And you don't have to put any gloss on this story. Celebrities such as Lindsay Lohan, Courtney Cox, Evangeline Lilly are puckering up. And it seems some late night talk show hosts like it too. However, there are some conflicting numbers out there. Information Resources, a market research firm, has reported declines in lipstick sales in supermarkets and department stores throughout this recession. So overall, can the beauty industry benefit from this sour economy? Or will the business go, well, down the tubes? And Hannah Zalza with us today. Thank you so much for joining us, Hannah. We're going to get to that. I want to talk about kind of the recession and the impact in just a second. But first, let's talk about how you started Cargo Cosmetics. You were a civil engineer working at Bell, I think, uh, creating, I'm not sure what it was, but creating something there. You became a marketer. Eventually, you were a financial analyst at Molson Gores, had three boys in the meantime. So when did you think makeup? <laughs> um, well, I always wanted to do my own thing, and I wanted the product to be fun. So I wanted to love what I did. I wanted to feel fas passionate about it. And, um, you know, I tried working for companies, and it was uh, square peg, round hole. And I kept trying, and uh, I just couldn't get to a place where um, I felt excited about waking up and going to work. And so I left it all behind and thought, I'll try something on my own. So how did you start out? I mean, where, was, where did you get the initial funding? How did you begin the process of developing a makeup line? Well, um, first of all, I, I wondered what I should come out with, and um, it was the early to mid-90s, and uh, one of the trends I was seeing was that there were more and more niche brands out there, and women were looking to be a little more, more experimental. They didn't necessarily want to use the same makeup that their mother's mother had worn, for instance. So um, the market wasn't very saturated, and uh, I was uh, on a trip to New York and noticed the department stores having some new niche brands, and I thought, this is a great opportunity. So um, I started developing with a lab some uh, cosmetics and also having a consumer perspective, you know, um, how can we make this better, easier? You're smarter for the consumer, and that's sort of been our our uh, our platform of innovation. How much did it cost when you started there? I mean, how much was that startup initial funding that you had to put in before you? You started getting bigger. You know, it, surprisingly, it wasn't a lot of money. So it was uh, acquaintances who um, became investors and uh, started small and, and got a purchase order and went from there. And one of the ways that you got big, you got a department store, correct? In Canada, Eaton's was one of the first things. Talk to me a little bit about that negotiation. How did you get your first department store and how did that, how did that work out? Well, I think uh, partly was timing. Um, so, you know, we, we have three department stores in Canada, um, or had, I should say, and, uh, you know, Eaton's did not have a, a makeup artist or a niche brand. Uh, so I approached them, and, and they had been thinking about bringing one in. 
Um, and after one meeting, they gave me 144 square feet in their flagship store downtown in the Toronto Eaton Centre uh, and two additional key locations. Um, so they believed in the brand right away. And that really catapulted your sales, I'm assuming, just from the start there. We, you know, we hit the ground running. And uh, and then, you know, who could have foreseen shortly thereafter that this, this department store that had been like an icon in Canada went under. Well, and I think this is interesting. Also, as an entrepreneur, I want to talk about that. So it goes under this huge department store. Yeah. What did that have you do? You're a new company starting. That was it. And really quick here, because we're going to have to go to commercial eventually. But what did, what did you do? Well, we're, wherever there's crisis, there's opportunity. So we have uh, the world's biggest market at our doorstep, which was the U.S. So we went into the U.S. And specifically, you went? We went into Barney's. To Barney's. And that was the beginning of your expansion in yes. the U.S. And also Sephora, correct? How long did it take to get that uh, contract? Sephora, I believe, was uh, late 90s that that happened. Um, and, uh, you know, they came to us and, and said they were looking for some new brands for their stores. I came and saw the store in New York and I was sold. Hannah Zalzal, CEO and founder of Cargo. Stay with us. It's Venture. We're looking at the lipstick index today. <laughs> Welcome back to Venture. I'm Chris Valerio. We are with Hannah Zalzal, the CEO and founder of Cargo Cosmetics. And we were just talking about some of the big names that you got to kind of just jumpstart your distribution here in the U.S. One of the things that made your company interesting was the packaging of it, correct? That mm -hmm. was one of the things that kind of set you guys apart. Talk to me a little bit about when, when you got the idea, okay, this is going to be our trademark. Mm -hmm. And also how your background played into that as an engineer. Mm -hmm. Well... It, it was about innovation and how do we make this better for the consumer. Uh, and, and the engineering played some role in it because, uh, you know, it's solution-based thinking. So uh, it's how do you solve this problem. Um, and we originally had the big tins, which we still do have, and, and the thinking behind that was creating a bigger surface area for the product so the brush could properly pick up. Because I had tried blushes that were tiny squares and you couldn't get a good blush brush and, and product pick up. And then from there we just continued to innovate. So our foundation pouch was another example where we borrowed packaging from the food industry. One thing I read, well, oh, that's, that's interesting from the food industry. One thing I read uh, that you mentioned was that the word of mouth is so important and we continue to see this with a lot of entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. but how did that kind of help you guys grow? Uh, it certainly helped us grow. We had uh, a lot of uh, makeup artists in LA using the product, using it on television shows, using it on celebrities. And How then, important was that celebrity endorsement? Um, you know what, it was really important to us because um, celebrities have access to the best products out there and the fact that they were using our product uh, really was a vote of confidence and, and then some of them went on to design product for us. I want to talk a little bit about the industry because it's kind of what we're covering here. I mean the numbers are pretty Pretty, pretty terrifying when you look at kind of the overall industry. Uh, industry sales, industry executives expecting first quarter sales in this industry to drop 15 to 25 percent. You have L'Oreal coming out with its slowest annual profit in 10 years uh, last year. People switching to cheaper brands. Estee Lauder lowering its sales forecast. I mean, we could go on and on with the statistics, but you guys saw double digit growth in 2008 and additionally uh, you're seeing for instance last month one of your products that that planet love line that we were seeing plant love line up 30 percent so how are you accomplishing this in a in a time when all the numbers point to something different well i think you can still grow even though the industry may not be growing and and i think we do that through product innovation keeping it relevant for the consumer um so uh, research will also indicate that natural and green products continue to grow. So our Plant Love line is doing amazingly well. It was just picked by InStyle as their best beauty buy for green makeup. Um, and then with the regular cargo line, uh, we offer value for the consumer. You guys don't advertise though, correct? No, we don't. Why did you make that decision? Um, I don't think advertise, it's advertising is a, is a paid marketing strategy and I don't think it speaks to um, the consumer in a credible way, whereas endorsements that are unpaid for are, are totally credible with the how, consumer. How important in this environment do you think that the private label idea, the prestige idea, is important versus uh, the big names out there? Well, you know, I think there's a place for everybody, and I think, you know, the credibility behind the cargo brand um, that's been around for 13 years and been used on the sets professionally, uh, I think the consumer sees that and, and appreciates that. And another thing, uh, quickly here, you've avoided over-distribution, but you have expanded. So wh where are your expansion plans right now? Uh, we're continuing to expand in Europe and doing very, very well in Europe. And we're also looking to expand into additional outlets in the U.S. as well. 
And what is the, uh, is, has, your, has your target consumer changed at all over the years? Uh, no, it's pretty much been consistent and, and our target sort of encompasses a, a broad range of women because I think all women want to look great and, and they want it to be easy, uh, they want it to be quick and they want it to be convenient. One uh, one of the things that we've seen that you've seen that we've seen in the industry when I was reading about it is emerging markets continue to have huge growth. Um, I think that developed markets contribute about eighty percent of worldwide sales of high end products. So the the growth opportunity is in those emerging markets. The credit crunch that we've seen hasn't impacted them to the extent that we've seen in some of our developed markets. So how are your plans within within those emerging markets? Uh, we're looking at them currently, um, but we're still continuing to see strong growth in the markets that we're in. So we want to be very very selective about where we go because wherever we go it's important to us to service that market properly. How are you changing your price points uh, in this environment? Do you, are you seeing, how are you changing them? Uh, we haven't changed our price points. I think value to the consumer isn't necessarily only price based. The value we offer to the consumer are products that are tried and true and it's products they can use daily, products that they can use until they're completely finished and then products they'd want to replenish and that's value it, instead of something you might buy use a couple of times and then it sits there for six months and what are you guys seeing as far as sales are people buying more of the lower the cheaper products are they buying more of the higher end products how's that how's that been no, playing out we, this we, year um, we saw a 230 percent increase in our eyeshadow category uh, 200 percent in our in what in what amount of time in the past year uh, yeah for the beginning of 2009 um, and we saw concealer business go up by 33%. We saw our face powder go up as well. So um, not necessarily the lower price products, but the products that are our true value. So for them, the lipstick and next is working. Hannah Absolutely. Zalzal, the CEO of Cargo, CEO and founder of Cargo. Stay with us. We're going to be back with more. You're watching Venture.